Kayla. And Jim. And welcome back to Meteorology Monday. Today we're going to talk about storm chasing. We figured since storm season is coming up and a lot of you guys probably want to learn how to chase storms or that's something that you want to do, we would kind of answer some questions and fill in the gaps and kind of give you a basic you know, Storm Chasing 101. That's right. And we're actually going to do this in two parts. This week we're going to put the first one out and that's going to be just the general overview of what you can do for storm chasing and some of the uh, questions that are most asked about it. And then part two, we'll kind of get in a little bit deeper, some deeper questions and, and some of the tricks of the trade that we've learned over the past year or two, uh, definitely chasing on a regular basis, but then uh, even more stuff over years of chasing. If you're new to our channel, we are actually meteorologists. We both went to school for meteorology and we've been chasing storms for me as long as I can remember. How long have you been chasing storms? <laughs> uh, it's been a long time, uh, 1985. I've been chasing since I was born. Since you were born. When was my first storm chase? You were... Uh, oh boy. I know definitely she was 18 months old we had just gotten back from Disney and there was a storm that blew up right over our apartment area where we were living. And I said to my wife, you know, wow, look at that. And she looked at me, she said, that's, that's looking a little strange. I'm like, yeah, you're right. So we hurried up, ran in, got her changed, threw her back into the car seat. We got in the car, we took off and we headed, uh, we lived in the, by uh, the beach in Florida at that time. And we hit that, got on top of the causeway and we saw the storm and we saw the, the tornado spinning out over the beach area and it was tearing things up and it was like, wow, <laughs> that is cool. So that was uh, one of your very one, first but... chases, yeah, being 18 months old. But so, she's been hooked ever since. <laughs> So with those qualifications, let's get into our first question. First thing you have to do is take a look at the weather and see when the storms are going to be forecasted for that day. We have our various sources, uh, the National Weather Service, Storm Prediction Center, uh, a few other sources that we look at. A bunch of computer models. That's right. And we kind of get an idea of the area to look at uh, in terms of geographically where are we going to go today uh, what's got the best chance of seeing something and sometimes it'll just be a regular thunderstorm sometimes it'll be lightning with uh you know tornadoes. maybe some hail it might be a tornado a chance of tornadoes Supercell. so depends on the day depends on the location that's right tornado season is normally end of March to the beginning of June, depending on which area you live in. If you're in Tornado Alley, the hot spot is more May time frame. If you live out in North Carolina like we do, it's more the beginning of June. Depends where you are, but that plays a big role in how the storm systems develop and where you want to go chasing. That's right, and if where you live is down closer into the southern states, you're going to start chasing a little sooner than you would up in the northern states. However, if you're into big time snowstorms, you know, spring snowstorms and stuff like that, Colorado or New England <laughs> might be the place for you. So it just depends on the kind of storms you want to chase and the time of year. It just depends on when the storms are forecast uh, and how soon we can get there. That's um, a big thing. If you work another yeah. job while you're trying to storm chase, probably going to be chasing after five o'clock. And there's been many times where we've had to pick up storms on the back end of a day instead of getting stuff that fired earlier. Yeah. But there's times where we've had things that would fire over the mountains 11 o'clock in the morning. So again, just depends on, on what we've got going on, where they're firing, and how long it takes us to get there. Definitely when you're chasing, you want to look for an area that's flat with not a lot of trees. If you are stuck in the southern states like we are, unfortunately there are a lot of trees all over the place. So finding a place that's like on the top of a hill, try to see over those trees. Or cornfields, if there's no corn. We don't like corn very much. We've got lots of great areas during the winter time. <laughs> yeah. They disappear in the summertime when the corn's growing. Uh -huh. <laughs> so there's a tip for you. We pull up our Apple Maps or Google Maps or whichever phone we're on and we'll look where like the biggest field is and we'll drive to said field and then it'll turn out to be a cornfield. And when you should normally have a really far view because this field goes on for acres, you have corn. And it's important to use updated maps too because sometimes you'll think it's a field 
and that map is old, and there'll be a building in its place. Or an entire housing development! <laughs> Our entire Spend housing did this get there! <laughs> you guys are quick. <laughs> <laughs> you want to wear while you're chasing it, you got to be aware <laughs> that the temperature drops uh, significantly when you have a cold front storm coming through. You definitely want to bring a jacket. Don't be caught wearing shorts like I often am. Unprofessional. Also bring shoes that you don't mind getting muddy because after said rain comes in, your shoes will be covered in mud and um, your car as well. That's another thing. You might want to consider something for your car, too, because you're going to be throwing yeah. in wet equipment, wet clothes, Tripods, wet jacket. Shoes, You know, jackets, your shoes might be muddy. Backpacks. So just be prepared yeah. that after your great storm chase, you're going to be bringing it to the car wash <laughs> and getting it, take, or getting it detailed. <laughs> Don't drink a lot of water before you plan to storm chase. <laughs> That's right. Don't do it. Part of our mapping strategy not only includes where to get a good shot, but it also includes where to fuel up, where to get the snacks, and where to go potty. <laughs> because you don't want to be stuck in the middle of nowhere South Carolina with no gas stations, no bathrooms, and you drank like two full water bottles before you got on the road. Guilty. So once you get to lo this location, you also gotta remember that you have to then get out of this location again. So normally when you chase, you like to take two people with you so that one person is driving, the other person can be planning your way in and out. Make sure that you are planning that way out though because you never want to get stuck in the middle of a thunderstorm, especially like on a dirt road or something. Everything turns to mud, you're in a dangerous situation and you don't know how to get back out. When you're looking to storm chase, you're going to need a radar. Obviously, you're going to have to know a little bit about radars if you're going to find, you know, a tornado area or strongest winds or that like perfect supercell area. You gotta know which part of the storms you're looking at. So a little bit about that we'll touch on more in our part two because that's a little bit more advanced. But we will say that the app that we use while we're storm chasing is called Radar Scope. You have to pay for it, but it's a really good radar and it helps a ton when it comes to storm chasing. Definitely. We use that, it'll tell us where the hail cores are, it'll tell us uh, where the strong winds are, where rotation is. So it helps us to definitely get ourselves positioned correctly and also be able to get out. Yeah, and it's without. got the, um, the SPC uh, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm warnings, all of those cones and the directions of the storm and the way that they're moving, it kind of actually like draws a line where the center of that rotation is going to end up. So it's a great tool to have. And it's very accurate too. Yeah. Very accurate. So we've yeah. been very pleased with it and it's helped us get a lot of storms. That's a good question. And again, it depends on the structure of the storm. Yeah. It depends on the direction that it's moving and the direction you're coming from to get to the storm to position yourself correctly. Generally storms move from southwest to northeast so if you kind of keep that in mind you can know where to avoid and how to chase it safely. And using an app like Radar Scope can help you identify where that hail core is and so as you see where the storm is moving you can stay on a, a better side of the storm to actually capture it. For instance if the storm is moving from southwest to northeast and you're below the storm or to the south of it, nine times out of ten it will go to your north and miss you but if you're to the north of the storm it might come up and hit you and you're not in a position that you want to be in exactly and if you're to the north of that kind of a storm you're gonna see a lot of the rain and, and stuff like that so you'll miss a lot of the hail until it's actually on top of you Kayla would you like to answer that question for us? It depends on the storm, but storms can go up to like 75 miles per hour depending on if there's a front pushing it, if it's an isolated storm. Sometimes they're really easy to keep up with and they just kind of like, you know, mosey along and you get wonderful shots and you see like this beautiful tornado just kind of spinning out in the middle of the field. And other times the sucker races by at like the speed of a NASCAR car and you have no idea what's happening and you're like, was that it? Maybe it wasn't, I don't know and then it's gone, and then you're just in the rain, and then you just wasted the entire day, basically. Not wasted, because storm chasing is fun, but... The answer is an emphatic yes! yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's the saying? 
you have to you have to chase nine storms before you get the tenth one. That's a, a good one. Yeah, a, a lot of things factor into it. Number one, how far are the storms away from you? You know, and will they fall apart by the time you get there? Will you find a location that points in that direction? Do you have to go to the bathroom and will you miss it? <laughs> That's happened. Somebody. <laughs> Sometimes there's no roads also. Sometimes yeah. you find like a perfect field or something, but it's oh, it's private property, there's no roads there, or they're dirt roads and it's gonna rain. You don't wanna be stuck on dirt roads. So there's a lot of things that can play into it. Not just busts on forecast, but also actual chasing busts as well. That's right. And, and that was another thing I was gonna bring up was uh, you can actually bust on your forecast. You think that, wow, you know, we've got these dynamics coming together for the day and it I winds up not materializing. Yeah. And so you wind up sitting home going, okay, this didn't work. Or you go, you know what? It's supposed to fire off here an hour away. You get in the car and you go, you show up and it's nothing but sunshine or just low stratus. And that's all you get for the day. Yeah. It makes for a very boring ride home. Yeah. Chasing is a game of patience, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you, it's boring for 90% of the time. It's not all like what you see in the movies, it's not all like like Twister or like the Storm Chasers TV show where it's go, 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 go. It, there's a lot of, you know, just driving all over the place listening to ACDC. <laughs> it ranks up there with fishing and watching paint dry. And, and once you catch that fish, now the excitement, that's what a lot of the uh, shows portray. That, yeah. That's where the excitement is, is when you're catching that fish. But they don't show the person sitting in the boat for the previous six hours <laughs> waiting for a bite. We once, what did we, we left at like eight o'clock in the morning one time for a storm system that was moving through the mountains. It was gonna get to us by, we thought like three o'clock. It ended up stalling. It didn't get here until what seven, seven yeah, or later eight. Later that evening, yeah. And so we spent twelve hours just kind of chilling in the car, driving all over the place. And then this storm rolled through at about eight o'clock. Now, when it's dark outside, your chances of seeing severe weather go down. So we wasted twelve hours to see a rainstorm. Make sure you bring plenty of good snacks and don't drink a lot of water. <laughs> So there are a few of our tips and tricks for storm chasing, part one. Oh boy, here we go. So if you found this helpful, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and sub subscribe, subscribe below. Subscribe down below. No, it's comment. Well, you can do both. So if you like what you saw today, give it a like, comment down below, and hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I'm Kayla. I'm Jim. Thanks for watching. And happy. happy.